What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode here of Palangi Studio of Rock, only on Radio Wigwam. Today we have video vixen model extraordinaire in the building, Lori Tucker, from music videos like L.A. Guns, Van Halen, Vogue Magazine, <laughs> everything. What's going on, Lori? Hey. <laughs> How I you pay- doing? I'm doing great. And I just want to say I pay Frank a lot to say nice things like that about me. <laughs> <laughs> no. Like it's all the beer you can drink, something like that. <laughs> I'm actually mailing you a package of my I stuff. I know. <laughs> and I can't wait. And I'm going to sport my Palangi shirt proudly. There you go. There you go. There's actually no shirt in there, though. There's okay, there's, well, <laughs> there's CDs and koozies, everything else, earrings. I got the earrings for you. Nice. Nice. Thank so, you. You are the first model, and I know I, you know, is it proper to say video vixen anymore? I, I say yes. You know, it's, it's okay. you know, is it, I don't know. I'll allow it. <laughs> yeah, we're not getting into all that stuff, but okay. So you're you're from um, California, and we're yep. still still in California now. Yes, and I am. for the viewers that necessarily probably have seen those music videos, but probably don't know the story behind it of how those got made you know the funny behind the scene jokes you have a lot of those (laughs) i do do. so take me back really quick of how did you even get started to be a a model in general well um i was a really tall lanky um, young teenager. So it was either basketball or modeling were my two choices. Oh, okay. And I was not good at basketball. So um, when I was about, I would say 15, seriously, you know, started um, testing, doing testing photos with some photographers that were in the area um, in the San Fernando Valley part of Los Angeles. So, yep, uh, yep. you know, and in probably around 16 and a half, I went to the um, the music di- division, photo division of the art center out here. And somebody told me I can get a list of testing photographers. And so you would, they would take your photos and get some pictures for their book. And, and I would get some. Oh, okay. So started doing that. Eventually at about 17, I got an agent out here. Mm-hmm. Um, at 18, uh, a French fr- uh, agency came out and uh, asked me to come to Paris So I went to Paris for a year. Wow. At 18? (laughs) That's crazy. And I just turned 18. And with in January, and I'm, you know, from here where it's 110 every day, you know, in the, in the summer, Mm. Um, it was about 30 or 40 there during the day. Uh, So I went with a whole suitcase full of, you know, the wrong clothes and like about 50 bucks. (laughs) (laughs) The agency took care of All those baguettes (laughs) over there. (laughs) <laughs> that's what I was living on. It's funny you say that because I literally, because the time changed eight hours, I literally went down to the bakery down the street. There's a million of them there. Wow. Uh, I had a plate with butter on it and a baguette under my bed. <laughs> because <laughs> In the model apartment, I slept in the living room because the other two rooms were already occupied by other models. Oh, so, okay. um, you know, I was close to the kitchen, which was really nice. <laughs> You're the new model, <laughs> living room. <laughs> right, it was the living room for you, back of the bus. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, so I could, when I got starving at odd hours, I could just, you know, reach into my bed and eat some bread and butter. You got but, it, uh, you got it. You come prepared. Yeah. You always want snacks and things, yeah. even if you're like. Um, but I I spent a year there, and it was an amazing trip. Um, got to go to the Maldive Islands for, I think, my first trip, my first shoot. It was for a bathing suit company, and we spent a week there. Um, it's just below Sri Lanka and it, oh, okay. it, it's incredible. And then um, my second trip was to the Alps, the French Alps. Oh, wow. So that uh, was cold. It, it was very cold. <laughs> and I'm just like, I'm the biggest wimp. If it drops below 85, I'm freezing. So, oh. so yeah, it was, it was cold, but another amazing trip, you know, um, they had ha- had the Olympics there. Um, it was Les Deux Alps up, up in uh up in France. So that was, that was great. Got to travel, got a lot of nice pictures from my book and then came back to LA to, um, you know, hopefully work and make money. So, uh, Mm -hmm. yeah. You were in Vogue Italy or Uh, I was in French Vogue, Italian Vogue and American Vogue a couple of times. Wow. Um, and you know, uh, the magazines in Europe are amazing. The amazing photographers there, the the photos are incredible. And there's a lot of, uh, fashion 
magazines too. So that's Do you get to keep the outfits from those huge, those big shoots? <laughs> I wish, you know, I did a lot of runway shows as well. So oh, okay. I did get to keep some really nice outfits. Okay. I actually have one that I kept forever that I got when I first went to Paris uh, that was given to me. And I, <laughs> I actually going to put it on auction. <laughs> So, yeah, I was going to say they're probably worth, you know, selling. Yeah, I mean it's kind of a it's kind of a crazy runway outfit, you know, so okay. it's nothing I could really ever wear again. I don't know many people will, but there's collectors out there. It's a Christian Dior, so there's a collector out there that will appreciate it. So Yes. Yeah. Why not, right? Yeah. You're not going to wear it. You got to keep something from the shoots. <laughs> I, I know worn that. It for the but... past 100 years, so <laughs> <laughs> Did they uh you know, I've heard stories in the '80s of like models not being treated well. They they treat you pretty well, and they they were nice about it over there. You no, know, I I have to say, you know, there's always going to be some you know bad bad actors and yeah. every business. or directors really, uh, you know, actors pointing fingers and directors. Yeah. Um, you know, for in, in every business, and I got really really lucky, and I've only had a couple things happen. Um, but you know, I I always looked at this job as a job as a profession and not a lifestyle and and so yeah. i was always really super professional from you know out right out the gate so i know you know conducting yourself in a certain way but it's it's also just you know speaking your mind and fending that off if you if you can you know yeah i think the ones that speak up and especially if your attitude's a certain way they'll kind of stay away you know what i mean yeah, exactly. it's like i'm just here to shoot and i'm here to hang around afterwards and Let's just say I tried not to be a target. So, um, yeah, yeah, <laughs> but yeah, it's the same thing in the music world. You know, there's always people that want you to, to party and, and right. do some other things that you don't want to do. And you're like, oh, no, I'm just going to, I got to pack up and I'm going to, I'm going to talk to people <laughs> in the audience. I'm going to leave. I'm going to, I'm going to go get a pizza, man. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. You know, they kind of, they don't respect you for it. But they're like, oh yeah, cool. You know, okay. I got something in the morning. <laughs> yeah. But it seems like the guys that do go out and then party and stuff, they, they end up getting better connections. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, there's a fine line, right? I yeah. Mean, it's okay to go out and have, like, I remember a couple of the designers, like, after the shows, they say, hey, let's go over here and go to this club and dance. And, you know, you go do that, you know, yeah. little, then go, go home or whatnot. But, um, or at a Denny's. <laughs> many, actually, many a Denny's stop. You know, I remember being, being with a male model, we had done a shoot. And it was in the way back and we were both so broke. We literally had like a dollar 50 in our pocket wow. and we carpooled. I like drove to his place and he drove to the, you know, the job. Yep. And we drove back into the Valley from Hollywood and we went to like Jack in the box and literally <laughs> bought one burger and one drink and split it, you know? Wow. <laughs> that was back way back in the day. Cup of water, please. Four things hit. <laughs> Luckily, water's free, at least still here. They were McDonald's were starting to charge for the cups. And I'm like, right. I'm, not, I'm not paying for this. I don't care. Right. If we're dessert, <laughs> we had a pine float that was, you know, a cup of water with a toothpick in it. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Whatever works, right? Right. Well, back then, you know, fast food, I, I think the burgers and stuff were a lot bigger than what they are now. Yeah. And, and they I, were a lot better. They were, and they didn't have the ingredients they do now. Yes. You, know, you yep. could actually eat something back then from, you know, McDonald's or whatever and, and not. They changed the oils. Die. That's the big secret. Everybody probably doesn't know. They changed actually the oils, how they made it. So it's all vegetable yeah. oil now rather than, you know, animal fat and stuff. So it's like, right. you don't get that nice flavor. <laughs> Being vegan, I'm like, oh my God. I <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, you know. Yeah. No, I, hey, I, I spent the majority of my life eating that stuff so yeah, yeah. You know? <laughs> we all do more when we're younger you know what i mean no judging <laughs> but how did you know, like i i like to talk about it a little bit how does food affect a performance i know for me like i can't just eat a big meal and then go and sing yeah probably not is um, that the same thing like you got to shoot and maybe you want to you just kind of eat enough to let's say stay lean that day and just have a little bit of energy and then eat afterwards. Or... Yeah. I think a huge meal is not the thing before we just, because it makes you a little lethargic after, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm then... for modeling. It depends on what you eat. So you know, stomach kind of bloats sometimes or you're like, you know, it's <laughs> exactly. like, Oh man, you know, no, I don't want to, I don't want to feel right. this way. <laughs> not a pound of like animal fries or anything. It, um, yeah. Yep. Except I, for that I'm Burger not... King shoot that you told me that story about. <laughs> 
Yes. Eating set fries. Yeah. I'm yeah, probably going to end up with some kind of disease eventually <laughs> from eating something that I think that was shellacked. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They did but spray them with chemicals. They did spray it down. <laughs> um, yeah. And then I noticed like on, on modeling photo shoots, um, everybody, like I, most of the models would get salads, you know, cause they didn't want to still be, Oh yeah. You know, really, really bloated up. But, um, I was never shy about that. I, I would eat a decent meal, like, you know, for lunch. Yeah. I belong to the NRA never refuse anything club. Th there you go. Food. <laughs> well, when you're, when you're trying to make it and you have limited money, sometimes you just have to eat what's in front of you. You know what yeah. I mean? Exactly. Where now, you know, whether you're vegetarian or vegan or sometimes if you're in that same situation, I hate to say it, but you either eat or you don't eat sometimes yeah. it's and luckily tough there, yeah there's always you know french fries or vegan by default side salads there's always something so that's true and, on, and on low no budget shoots it's not the same way you have to eat no. whatever you're given and i'm notorious for bringing my own stuff with me like snacks and things like that yeah but you, now here in america you're on a commercial set you're on a you know tv show set whatever they just the craft service tables filled with amazing junk oh. and they always have amazing <laughs> catered lunches and they do, um, yeah. in Europe, they don't think they need to feed you. <laughs> oh, really? They, they, like bring out some rolls. Just tea time, <laughs> right? Here's some rolls. We know you've been working for 12, 13 hours, but this should do you. But um, wow. yeah, no, they're really <laughs> Man, I didn't know that. I really didn't know that. So they don't feed you as well there. I know. Yeah. Every commercial I've done here um, locally, there's always snacks and food oh, and yeah. stuff. And I'm like, they asked me what'd you do and i was like i I was in two, i probably worked two hours out of the eight hours and i just ate the whole time <laughs> oh yeah that those craft tables are really gosh you know stop doing that it's so good yep but italy on the other hand that, that was a good lunch two okay. hours two hours wow know? oh yeah i can only imagine i'm italian <laughs> i'm italian so right to say italiano italiano come on now <laughs> so mangia, mangia. I tried to do an interview and uh, for somebody in uh, I think it was South America and their name was Mardonio and I could not say it <laughs> non-Italian and they were laughing on the air. I don't, I don't speak Spanish, but they were like, you know, Spanish speaking. And then Frank Palangi, Italian, <laughs> tries to say Mardonio. And I go, oh, sorry, guys. <laughs> exactly. Sometimes that happens. Well, at least with and modeling, that, there's no words. so it's, uh, Right. Exactly. But I, I did live in Italy for about 10 months. I lived in Milano. And um, I, so when I try and speak Spanish now, I'm trying to learn Spanish. They're telling me I have an Italian accent. So yes. I have a hard time, you know, with the... It rolls out the tongue yeah. a certain way that you just... It does. It's just it there. Does. La Porta Rosa, La Puerto Roja. You know, it's like... I yeah, I could see that. I could see the influence in there. So how did you get into these these music videos? I mean, you were in everyone knows Hot for Teacher music video. Yeah, you know Van yeah, Halen. Gosh, just turned out to be such a classic, and I'm so happy to have been even a small part of Van Halen history because I was such a huge fan before I, you know, even went on the interview for that. But you know, I came back from Europe, and you know, a few months later, um, MTV had exploded, and along with you know modeling and TV and commercial interviews. We started getting music video interviews. So yep. uh, I, I think I was telling you before that Van Halen, I believe, was the first music video interview I'd ever gone on. Okay. Um, so yeah, we went and did an, did an improv, um, got the job, came back, had to meet the guys. Um, <laughs> it was such an experience. <laughs> they had so to approve everybody. Yeah, well, you know, we the funny thing is the three of us girls already got it and then they wanted to meet us because they had to view the tapes and they probably had to view, God, like, you know, a thousand people. So they just had the three of us come back and meet them and just say hi and stuff yep. like that. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Yeah, so um, that was an amazing set to work on. It was really fun spending three days with those guys. They're, you know, I have six brothers and they're knuckleheads, just like my brothers were. <laughs> <laughs> he said Eddie was really funny or he, he was like nice. sleeping in the scene too. Yeah. He, he just a sweetheart of a guy, everything you hear about him, having the best attitude, always having a smile on his face, always grinning, yeah. you know, um, so we, I was in the jail cell scene. I'm detention teacher Wanda. Yep. And then the three of us are Waldo's girls in the end. But um, 
during the jail cell scene, Eddie, you know, all the three young Van Halen sat behind us and the rest of the group. And then David being in front of the jail cell okay. when he's class dismissed and all, all that stuff. So Eddie laid on the floor uh, for some reason. <laughs> so he's just down on the floor and he was, um, you know, during rehearsals, I would have to go back and forth and I had like four inch heels on and, you know, this corset whip and big hair. So I was like a thousand feet tall because I'm 5'11 already. And your hair was dark. It, yes, I have Auburn hair naturally. I'm okay. Scottish, Irish, you know, mm. French. I don't even get to that. But no, it was... <laughs> um, Canadian anyways, French uh... or French French? <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So he was, you know, teasing me during rehearsal and like sticking his feet out like he's going to trip me and, <laughs> you know, and calling. I think I, so I got called Towering Inferno and Attack of the 50 Foot Woman. And I think Eddie said Attack of the 50 Foot Woman. Because when I'd get near him and he's laying on the ground, I'd probably look like, you know. Yeah, with the yeah. shoes and everything. And that's <laughs> yeah. what I heard a lot of, a lot of musicians and stuff in the 80s. They, they treated it as a fun time, even though it's like guys are shooting a music video. Right. Nowadays, yeah. a lot of people are serious about it. Uh, like a lot, you know, and right. they don't really act that way anymore. But serious. you could tell yeah. the way the music video turned out that that's a part of it. You know yeah, I mean? and, and everybody was really professional, but you know, you're sitting in a doing a scene for like five hours to shoot ten seconds of you yeah. know, footage. Yeah. Everybody gets really goofy, and yeah. So every time I think about this stuff, I always think of uh, I love uh, uh, VH1 Classic. Remember that channel yes. with the yeah. Matt Metal Show, Eddie Trunk? Oh yeah, love it. Yeah, I was like, you should you should talk to Eddie one day. He's he, I mean, he's like the metal guru. I know, and I see him here and there at events. He just hosted the um, heavy metal rock induction of Twisted Sister and a couple nice. other people over um, just close to my house here in LA. And you know, saw him at Sebastian Bach's show. He was he's I've seen pictures there. with you with him. Yep. So we were, yeah, we were. All <laughs> I know, it's so funny. He is such a crack up. I haven't um, met Eddie yet, Eddie Trunk, but um, yeah, he's around. I need to. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Around. We we oh. had uh, you know, we've had guests a lot on the show since we started this almost a year ago in in oh, wow. May. Okay. And um, we've had the Ace Freely band members and stuff on there, and then I noticed like a couple weeks later he was on uh, Ryan uh, Cook. There was on Eddie's show as well, and I was oh, like, "Oh yeah, that's pretty cool." Because he's you know his show is huge, and I'm like, oh, that, yeah. "That's that's pretty cool to have some of the same yeah. guests kind of go back and forth." Yeah, and be like a little catalyst to that, which is nice. Yeah, yeah. and he's like, you know, I, I just talked to Gene this morning because he's friends with Gene Simmons, obviously. And I was like, "Oh man, I I gotta get him even for a ten minute interview someday." Right. Please, awesome. yeah, that would, be, that would be stellar. So you were you were in Michael Jackson's brother, his music video. Yeah, I was in. Um, so I did a lot of you know rock like L.A. Guns, Van Halen, um, you know uh, Roger Waters from Pink Floyd, which was fun to work on. And, nice. Um, and L.A. Guns was just a kick. Total Hollywood. You know, we shot everywhere iconic in Hollywood. You know, Mulholland Drive and the Roxy Theater on Sunset Strip. Walk of Fame, Behind the Palace Theater. You know, all just, your photos in the background, too? Yeah, that's all my Polaroids and just memorabilia that I frame up uh, for that's memory. That's cool. But, you know, my ring light's like the size of Saturn. You can't <laughs> <laughs> There's no and rat then, up there, right? You never met rat? Those uh, guys? I haven't met rat, but I don't have rat up there. It's, uh... <laughs> the rat probably be on the ceiling. Or no, actually on the floor, right? Rat. On yeah, the there's floor. a rat up there. Yep. But along with that, I did do um, Rick James, Lucy Rap. That oh, wow. was fun. <laughs> nice. And um, Jermaine Jackson, which is Michael Jackson's brother and Janet Jackson's brother. And um, yeah, we shot that at A&M Records here in Los Angeles. And while we were shooting, his sister was shooting or doing rehearsals, I think, in another studio at A&M. So during one of the breaks, he, you know, brought a few of us over there and we got to like, you know, wow. meet her, watch a little, listen a little. So that was that was. At at the time, I mean, I don't know if you knew, like, did you feel like, you know, because Michael Jackson's like a legend now. Their whole oh, family is, not just yeah, Michael. Yeah. And it's like, and he was already did, you, been. did you feel that way? Like on Janet's set, you're like, oh, this yeah, is like Michael's. For, for sure. Yeah, because that was when I shot that, it was, she was in, you know, prime of her career at that time. So, yeah, it was, 
you definitely feel that with that family. And, you know, I live in the Valley and their uh, compound house um, was right off of Ventura Boulevard near where I lived. And so you, a day didn't go by where when you drove by, there was a plethora of people hanging out at the front gate. So there's this gate and oh. the driveway goes back, who knows how far into the yeah. compound. And, you know, that's where Michael lived, you know, with his family and some of the family members and things like that. So they all had their, their space there. Who would stay out there every single day just to be like, well, he's got to come out some point. Right. It's like, well, he's on tour for next three months. Good luck. (laughs) But they're still out there. They're like, maybe we'll catch LaToya, you know, maybe we'll catch Jermaine, somebody. So yeah, that was fun. We had to audition for that one by playing um, like air guitar, um, air drums awesome <laughs> playing the trombone playing the trombone. <laughs> <laughs> did you ever get any musical instruction from these guys on set like they'd say um, yeah you know uh not really on that one we just okay. kind of you know flew by the seat of our pants but i we did the the horn section did get instructed to use the spittoon thing they have because when you oh, okay. pull on it even if you are pretend blowing in it yeah Make, oh, so the studio loud. the front row of the the fake audience we had <laughs> which yep. were real people yep. um, yeah built in a little <laughs> cheer okay. when we say so now <laughs> <laughs> yeah so yeah, that was interesting but yeah it's funny how the music video world, and it's it's part of the movies too. It's yeah. it's all magic, you know what I mean? It's like you have people there, but they're really all hired extras or fake audience. Yeah, and they're like, oh, you know, how do you like it, guys? And and they're supposed to say yes, so it's like, yeah, you know, craft craft services. That's pretty yeah. much what they're happy about. Yeah, after the fiftieth time, <laughs> though, okay. people are like, woo, right. you know. Yeah. <laughs> they don't realize that they're going to hear that song over and over right. and over the, again. How many times did you hear that on set? Did they play that back on set? Oh, you know, every single video you're doing, they were playing it on loop, you know? Wow. So three days you heard hot for teacher. Yeah. And I'm not like, I'm, you know, I pardon me, but I'm not like the biggest country music fan. I like a lot of it. There's a lot. Of, I like some old, like Hank Williams, junior Hank Williams, you know, things like yeah. that. Tammy Wynette. There was a cool bit. movie they, I, they made of him too, Hank Williams. Yeah, I gotta watch that. And then yeah. I like some of the newer stuff, you know, like um Elvis. Yeah. Thank you very much. Sam Hunt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <There> you, <go. laughs> yeah. <laughs> you got a little too well. <laughs> so I, I ended up doing a Dwight Yoakam music video. And that was oh, a real okay. thing to work on, but it was just so funny. And their whole crew was all, you know, they they were just a really great crew. Um he had this he's kind of like a road manager roadie person and his name's pumpkin and okay. I was talking to him. it was really nice you know and then dwight <laughs> walks by and i said oh i know what you mean pumpkin and dwight goes that's pumpkin <laughs> <It's>, with an n <laughs> he was really, he wasn't really too happy about me pumpkin. calling this guy pumpkin instead of pumpkin <laughs> oh geez oh yeah so yeah, but that was that was interesting to work on and you know another video i did early on was diana ross and julian Iglesias had a, a video called all of me and it was bob girardi and he directed it and he always directed all the big dance things just like with janet and, and things like that yeah and so for me i grew up loving diana ross i mean she to me was like a goddess <laughs> you know mm-hmm. so that was really cool and be able to like stand next to her or just being, <laughs> I wish I had my Polaroid camera, but I don't know if she would have even allowed a, a photo. Of yeah. Her. <laughs> on set that, that happens. You're like, you, we never got a picture. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's, exactly. You're on set. Yeah. Right. You some of ask. the people are really cool. And some sets you just know not, not to do it, you know? Yeah. Had, I, I always feel like at the end or the beginning, they should mm-hmm. get everybody together and just take a, a cast kind of photo. And then if you want a photo with the actor, really, just really quick, especially in the right. beginning. Cause it's like you inviting everybody on the set to be like, Oh yeah, we're going to hang out today rather than like right. stick to your own corners, folks. Right. You know, And it's so different from these days. I, I still do, you know, print and commercial here and there. And um, a couple of friends have had me be little parts in their music video. Yeah. And, um, you know, now you have your phone and it's really easy. You just click away. But I used to bring a Polaroid. So it was like 
Load the Polaroids. <laughs> wait a minute. Wait a minute. Take it in the air. Wait for it to. <laughs> wait. It doesn't take like, like five minutes for the thing to come out. <laughs> like loading a musket. Yep. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. Gunpowder in there, and you know. Well, at least now it's faster, so they can get to to other people faster. <laughs> Much faster. Yeah. But that is an idea. Have you done stuff like that lately, where people are like, "I'm doing a music video. I'm doing a movie. You know, and send me yeah. some some cell phone." footage you know of you doing this or whatever <laughs> yeah i mean um usually just friends will ask me and then they'll just say show up on the set <laughs> 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 you'll be dancing around you'll be in our teaser you know yeah like, yeah um so i just got asked to do another one which should take place in june it'll be interesting <laughs> okay well, I might have to get you for some cell phone footage since we live far away here. Okay. <laughs> so we'll get you. I'm doing that second horror movie, and I, I definitely need people for that. But okay, something something for, for a music video would be cool, too. But uh, right. Just recreate Wicked Wanda, the detention <laughs> whip. And... Depends on the song. You know zombie what I mean? or something. <laughs> yeah. yeah, zombie stuff would be cool. I, I had a song, Dead Man. I was like, oh, he pictured the guy there was this 80s movie where there was like a dead guy who was a zombie who was a friend or something like that so i pictured them like what if the guy was in the seat next to him they're driving out of control and stuff and then you had all these zombies that they were driving past and yeah i guess that's my hollywood version you know right <laughs> but it works yeah but something like that yeah is, is very cool but uh it's it's great though that you can do things like that now and be like even if the guys from australia be like we want you to be in our music video can you send us whatever yeah. it is and you can just do it yes i i you know uh, exactly and i have had friends say can you take a little footage of this or take a photo of that and send it to us and, yeah yep so yeah and it's you know that's really the beauty of technology these days and social media these days yeah you could be yeah. in the the photo that the guy holds up. You know what I mean? Like this was that person, and yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. Yep. So, or like yeah. uh, a Terminator fan film. You know, it's like oh, it's Sarah Connor right there. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah, that's very popular though. Now I don't, you know, uh, bands that do. Here's an interesting, right? I don't know if you ever had this. Bands that do cover songs. Yes. Say somebody did Hot for Teacher cover song, and they asked you to actually be in their cover song music video yeah that... <laughs> I, I haven't seen a lot of that stuff but that's I, yeah you know that's true um i know somebody i know a couple people did covers of it but um there was a director that a music video director that i worked with a few years back i have to minus covid that's two years gone so like three years like back three or, yeah like four years back now yeah and um he had found out not during that shoot, but after that I was in hot for teacher and he, that he, you know, as, as many video directors I've worked with from then until now, they always say that, that hot for teacher was their like inspiration for becoming a music video director. Oh, really? Okay. It's so cool. And then Eddie's always, everybody's, you know, inspiration for playing guitar, which is awesome. So, um, Yeah. Uh, he said, oh, you know, I'd really love to recreate that that scene and I'll I'll get the set and, you know, we're, we're going to do it. But then <laughs> I'm like, okay. <laughs> and he's like, are you serious? I'm like, sure, okay, I'll do it. Um, and then he's just got so busy. He's done about a million videos. So we oh, never okay. did it, you know, maybe. As an homage day. type thing he's talking about. <laughs> yeah, just yeah. an homage. Just homage. Yep. So, uh, yeah, it didn't happen, but, you know. Maybe soon. Someday, you never know. Uh, yeah, I have a friend in um actually yeah, you yeah, have a friend that um does has a cover band and um he was saying we find to have you on stage one time but he lives back he lives in the south, you know. I'm like I don't uh, know if I can get there for a show or two. Too far away. Too darn it. I'm yeah. it. It's sunny now. We we were done with the rain, I think, knock up wood. Yeah, it has been raining here too. It's windy. We get we get a lot of wind here for some reason now and then you know, yeah. it's it's starting to get warm. Right. It's starting been extra warm. windy here, which is unusual. Um, yeah. You guys get really weird weather now. You get, <laughs> like, weird. everything. Just Tornadoes, weird. whatever. Right. Earthquakes. I thought earthquakes and fires were enough. You know, because yeah. LA burns during the, the summer. Smog. Then... I've heard about the smog. Yeah. You know, 
in LA, a little bit in the Valley. Um, Probably not where you not are, really though, right? where I live. It's just a little further out, but um, yeah, I mean, every major city is kind of, I, I, the San Fernando Valley is notorious for it because it's a valley <laughs> and it just, yeah. you know, yeah. fills up and doesn't have a place to go. So that, that can get kind of bad. I, I've never, obviously never been to California, but I was looking at the map and I'm like, I think most of the like, like San Diego is towards the South part of it. I don't know if Hollywood is too. And I'm like, yeah. is everything kind of mid to South to the, it, the whole state? Um, Well, from, from LA. Yeah. Usually it's all from here to there, but oh, okay. Um, yeah. I mean, we're, you know, we're kind of on that middle bottom end of the state, you know, so, and yeah. up north has a whole different weather system. So, yeah, you know, I yeah, you get going, snow up there. Yeah. And I remember going to San Francisco, um, left on a road trip and it was 111 in the Valley where I was living. And by the time we got to San Francisco, it was like 30 degrees, wind blowing, freezing, <laughs> literally brought, you know, bathing suits and t-shirts thinking, you know, yeah, it's a summer cool. day. Yeah. <laughs> nope. Ended up really getting off the road and buying you know hoodies and all this stuff just Some, to, somewhere yeah yep. it was very off-putting <laughs> yeah yeah it could be like that you never you never quite know you know what i mean some i had somebody uh come from salem to new york and they were like it's freezing here <laughs> <laughs> when massachusetts starts thinking something's cold you know <laughs> yeah i know and i'm like well you guys weren't near the ocean and i am you know <laughs> uh, they always say new york they think new york city everybody too I'm like i don't, right. I don't live in new york city upstate right I live like four hours away from the coast oh, okay. <laughs> so that's like going from here to nevada you know <laughs> yeah or another yeah. state good thing about new yeah. york is like within four hours you can reach five different states which is kind of cool depending on where you are yeah um somewhere yeah. like you know bigger state you're like i gotta drive eight hours to get out of state Right. Which yeah. Is, which is tricky. What's your yeah. What's your favorite project or music video or shoot that you've done so far? Well, I'm gonna have to say, you know, Van Halen. Van Halen. <laughs> what about the L.A. Guns one? We didn't really talk yeah. about that in the Facebook. Yeah, L.A. Guns was. Um, yeah, it was just such a kick. It was. It was really fun. Like I said, just shooting at all these different places all over town. Mm -hmm. was really fun and um you know going i think from the roxy theater and then we had to go downtown la to this really really old hollywood hotel we shot some some scenes in some of their like ballroom or or whatnot and you know tracy i had a little sports car at the time and tracy's guns the you know lead guitarist he's just an awesome guy and um he's like oh can i just ride with you instead of riding in you know the crew bus or whatever yeah riding. the smelly man yeah, and I had made an Alice Cooper mixtape at home, and um, <laughs> and I had everything like from. Like, you remember mixtapes, folks, out there in the radio station? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I had my dual deck cassette player. You know, I was mm -hmm. high tech, and I was just. You know, You'd just bring a tape recording. to the radio stations. I remember too. <laughs> yeah, that's what I used to do. Yeah. Right, and then um, so then I you know popped that in, and I just one of my fondest memories of Tracy and I just jamming and singing at the top of our lungs to Alice Cooper. You know, <laughs> heading up sunset boulevard all the way to downtown was and, it teenage know. frankenstein that kind of stuff was out then or is it uh, older um, stuff that's older but i mean uh or what do we call it yeah but i had pretties for you 18 oh yeah you know, <sighs> 18. all that you know yeah yeah creed, creed did a cover of that it's hard to find but they uh oh. it's it's interesting they didn't like release it release it but it's like a bootleg oh kind of thing. I check that out it's a uh, recording but i think it's on yeah. youtube somewhere it's pretty neat He's got a great voice. I'd like to hear that. Yeah, so. his is obviously like, oh, me too. <laughs> you know? And you're like, yeah, okay. Yeah, he just sang at a fundraiser last year that I helped with. Um, oh, I'm wow. With. Yeah, he sounded great. Wow. That's really that's good. one guy I've always wanted to open up for. We we almost did before he had his, let's call it, breakdown. Yeah. And uh, we had two shows lined up, and then obviously they were – canceled and that drummer i was working with became his drummer for like six months wow until that happened and then you know he had to regroup everything wow. um but i was i was so bummed because i go that that's him and like metallica are like my number one <laughs> right so, i know you know there's wow. that big um festival coming out in indio um power trip 
and it's got you know Ozzy Osbourne, Metallica, Tool, yeah. actually, you know everybody. Maybe Skid Row. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but um, yeah, it's got a lot of great bands. But it's the tickets went on sale I think yesterday morning, and just the GA for three days was like seven hundred dollars. And you know it'd be a thousand with the yeah with, with the, the fees. fees. Yep. And a friend of mine and I, we only want to go one of the days because we've seen, we just saw Guns N' Roses, just saw Iron Maiden. So we I don't have to see them. Um, yeah, yeah. So we were like, you yeah, know, just go to the Metallica show, but they don't even sell the one day passes. So <laughs> I've been trying to hit up all my connections, but so far, nothing. <laughs> Festivals, there's like no chance to meet bands. You know what I mean? Oh, no, it's, no, it's no, the clubs yeah. and stuff it, that you want. It to. wouldn't be about that. Yeah. I mean, it would yeah. just be, and, and you know what? It's pretty much going to be a lot of chaos. So I, I really normally, wouldn't even want to go to that yeah <laughs> something I, like that unless it was like a like i said a one day thing go in and listen for a few hours and you know go are back. you re- i'm not a fan of that anymore where it's like everybody's just no. sardine no. together no you know yeah. i just uh i i love these smaller venues they're so great and we have a lot of them here in la and because a lot of the people live here, we get to see people that maybe don't even tour anymore, or that when they tour, they're in big stadiums with other bigger bands. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, it's, it's fun. Like, I was actually at the Whiskey last night and saw uh, Steel Panther. Oh, <laughs> I Jesus. Don't you've ever seen them. <laughs> but they are such a great show. They Still have, 80s. Oh, my gosh. They have such an amazing show. So, they have two sold out shows of the whiskey tonight and last night and oh wow it's it's like watching a you know awesome 80s band a comedy show and yeah yep. you know it's it's hysterical and the, and the girls there yes and, you know yeah it's it's, it's They're known not for rated that. g at all no they they play in poughkeepsie every once in a while it's a couple hours from me yeah yep they come it's, around every once in a while yeah it's it's worth it though it's 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 very entertaining so yeah 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 it's funny there's there all you know at least there's bands out there still doing that you know yeah. like Greta Van Fleet that's more 70s kind of style but right. it's a, it's a style of what was before right and i was i was always like you know well we're a classic rock radio station we only play that type of music mm-hmm. so i'm like when you hear that as an artist you're like well what if you made that music would you play my music or does it have to be classic <laughs> 40 years old or whatever it is right, right, and, it's, right. and it's like like Greta Van Fleet it's I would say as long as the band fits into that play should, them play yeah them. you should it should be able to play that I mean we're internet radio station I I always forget because I'm in New York but the station's based in the UK and they, okay. they do a bunch of stuff over there too and I'm I'm the New York guy okay <laughs> basically and i'm like you're the you know, across the pond guy the across the ponds yeah they they you know it's sad because they they put on some shows and stuff like that and i like to be a part of, of it more but i, I can't because obviously i'm over here right, but yeah. someday maybe i can drag the radio wigwam stuff this way yeah. but anyways yeah. like the radio stations and stuff it's not like what it used to be you know what i mean and no um, not at all i'm not gonna say whose fault or whatever it is but it's it's uh maybe the programming (laughs) we don't know we don't know we don't know but you know it's it's changed when i was a kid the videos that were already 10 15 years old um even the van halen one that you're in i i seen that when i was a kid because they would still play at certain hours of days right nowadays it's it's choose your own adventure and i don't know what you think about that but i think there's too much Mm-hmm. And it's almost like everybody being, uh, well, I listen to this, you know, it's a real small niche right? and I listen, it's almost like everybody has their own small niches rather than here's what we're all listening to today. And then here, right. here's, here's the next star and they tell you who it is. Right. I so agree with you. And, yeah. um, you know, like the, the industry, this industry and many other industries like that, and especially in entertainment have really changed over the years drastically, you know, yeah. and there's the pros and cons to it. And I think the con is that you don't have these, like you said, people are like, this is what's cool. This is what people are listening to. Here's the genres. And these are the, top even the mega songs. stars. You know, yeah. Like, and, mm-hmm. and unfortunately, like, you know, if you play a song, let's say on YouTube or something, then they give you a playlist, you know, they start sending you that stuff. So a lot of people are, they're like just listening to this one kind of music, one group, you know, yep. one genre. 
and they get stuck into that, um, which is kind of sad. You know, it's still a click. You know, like click in high yeah. school and all that kind of stuff. You, yeah. you get in that click, you're there, <laughs> man. True. Spotify starts putting you on those rock plates. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta watch out. Yeah. You know. Which is, uh, it's a battle, I call it Skynet from Terminator. I'm like, it's a battle <laughs> yeah, of the machines right. because it's, yeah. a, you know, algorithms and all that stuff. And It's true. That is so true. <laughs> even good. social media, you know, as, as models, as musicians, it's all the same. We're all trying to occupy this space, this weird ad space of who... Who's going to show our post more? You know, is, is Instagram yeah. going to take my post or your post more? <laughs> who's happier? Who's doing best? Who's doing the most? Who's doing yeah. The most? And uh, I don't know how you feel, but I always feel like, you know, if you have the people that are following you, it should reach all the people that follow you, not yeah, five or I 10%. <laughs> totally get that. Right. You have the same group of people that see everything. And yep. Yep. We all and know that people that you that see everything all the time, or you see all of their stuff. I've had people just like literally that I, that I like, and I like their pages. I like the, the person and they just like fall off the universe and they're yeah. still posting and still there. And then I'll like months later, I'll go, where did they go? And then I'll go back and I'm like, geez, they're still there. They're still posting, but they're not even on my, you know, yeah. feed. Yeah. So I've, I'll like reach out to them and say, Hey, how you, how you doing? <laughs> you know, and then get it, get it going again. So they're back on my, yeah it's it's weird because say we all go on different music kicks like say you started listening to country music a little bit more you you don't get those rock updates and those rock bands until right. you switch back and you start liking all the rock band stuff that's it that's the skynet right man there. on that feed you know you just you look at one picture and they're just feeding you a thousand of the same things you know? yeah you yep. weren't that interested in the beginning yeah <laughs> I get a lot of tour stuff now since since interviewing bands and I see the same live go. pictures over and over and over again and I'm like I love bands but sh come on know, yeah a picture come from on, every man. night's tour that I'm not even on or you know I'm not even seeing you know it's it's right yeah it's right. weird I I love hearing new music and stuff out there though yeah. you know our yeah. albums out and like Daughtry and Lizzie Hale I I played oh. one of their that new song on on the show and uh yeah. Stuff like that is like that's that's what you want to know because, right? It is kind of like a news feed. I mean, it is news, I guess. Yeah, so that's, that's how you find out. Right. Yeah. I uh, everybody out there listening in internet land, thanks for tuning in. I found Lori by chance. Actually, I tagged her in a post, and I was just like, um, "What? What is this? Is this really happening?" I'm like, "Okay, now I I gotta get her on my show now." <laughs> So it was a nice coincidence of because I was going through like these '80s rock kind of stuff, and I was like, I'm gonna I'm gonna tag some of these people just just in case. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and it worked. Oh, thanks for tagging me. Um, yeah, it's been really really fun, and I appreciate that. And it's yeah. yeah anytime, I love you know I'm one for the stories, and obviously I wasn't around then, and we You're all right. we all love those music videos, and yeah. to have that back. Yeah stage access of the stories and yeah and it's you know. just like yeah it's it's uh you know no more real mtv anymore so no well <laughs> you know anyway, maybe maybe sometimes something will change you know and yeah. some stuff will come back but uh so anybody who you know wants to hit you up you're on instagram and yes. get you know get you in the music videos and and more gigs and <laughs> You have what you're not on Facebook, right? I think I asked you. Yeah, that I'm on, I'm on Facebook. I'm just not okay. on there a lot, but all of my stories always transfer. I'm always, you know, posting stupid memes and music videos and music. Okay. You're gonna have to be sending me oh, your okay. uh, yeah. your Facebook too. <laughs> okay. Yep. And then um if anybody wants to reach out to you too, you have a website too or email? I don't email? know. Okay. No. Yeah. It's, it's kinda on who you know. It's for giggles, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Someday I'll get serious about it. <laughs> <laughs> Someday. I think I think you've been serious about it for a lot of years. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. I'm yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, like you said, the industry changes and and now it's you don't even talk to people anymore. You you send them your your link and and you're like, "Well, if we check out your link and we like you, you know, we'll let you know." Yeah, exactly. <laughs> It's so crazy. Yeah, I, I, they do that on commercial interviews now. They'll literally have you write down your your Instagram or your your follower count. That's maybe. crazy. 
Um, yeah, so they can see because now they want you to and promote their product or their thing, you know, and yeah. like, people can you reach if you say, Oh, worked on this today, you know, which is crazy. It's yeah. like, <laughs> sometimes you're like, I'm just here because I need a job. Right. You know I, mean, what I mean, I don't necessarily like, you're, the you're, the you know, you're hiring us. So. I don't necessarily use uh cologne, but I'm here in this cologne commercial. <laughs> use deodorant. Why would you want me to? <laughs> yeah. I don't even use deodorant. You know what I mean? Oh, God. I think I brush my teeth with this stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll see what they spray on the next Burger King fries commercial. Here. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm all in. <laughs> Check it you out. That. <laughs> so thanks for being the first, you know, video vixen and, and, you know, model on my show. I've had a few producers and um, a sound guy and stuff on here too. Nice. And I always like to, I like to talk about gear. I know, I know you're not in the gear part of the music world, but the, the the stories anything that you want to throw out there that maybe people you think people don't know but it's kind of a cool little thing well a lot of musicians like to talk about their gear i mean that's a huge thing if you look on everybody's pages i mean majority is like i got this new thing i got this new oh, yeah right <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm preaching to the choir right? i got my crane set up for my my movie <laughs> shoot here that's what that is in the background for people yeah. that are looking at the video version and, uh, you know, make sure you go over to our YouTube and check out the video versions of this afterwards. So just because you're listening on the station and we're going to have a podcast format on Spotify and everything we're out. So you can listen to it on the go at the gym, wherever podcastville. So check that out. Okay. So I'll let you, I'll let you tell one last thing. Maybe some people don't know or something funny, any, any cool kind of factual thing from, from anything that you've did like oh yeah i forgot <laughs> this right here yeah yeah this was awesome oh my god well i just um i worked on i i'm just going through my garage and going through because I, I took a lot of polaroids as i was saying mm -hmm. and i found one of uh bill murray and uh -oh. bill murray i had our agency had hired three of us models to actually go to the set I, 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 well, my agency didn't. So Richard Donner, the the director, oh, yeah, oh, had, yeah, he was a good guy. An agency and say, you know, we want three models to come and stand in with the rest of the the group when Bill gives his big speech in 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 um, Scrooge, um, because we want him to be really uh, like, motivated and stuff. So you know, we so you're in Scrooge on and high yeah and scrooged so wow. um so we're hanging out we were in um it was at, i think warner brothers studios so there was um you know the sound stage that was everything was set up and then we had our these little bungalows and stuff right across for hair and makeup and wardrobe and stuff like that and so he he, he'd walk up there and come in and there'd be like 10 10 of us or something and he'd just start telling jokes <laughs> like really funny bad jokes you know yeah <laughs> like yeah silly things <clears throat> and then he's like, well, anybody hungry? I'm going to go. And he got in his convertible Cadillac with his friend assistant, I don't know, and drove off to Pink's Hot Dog, which is, you know, this iconic hot dog place in Hollywood. Oh, okay. And came back with a couple of boxes and brought it into our room and then gave everybody hot, hot dogs and French fries. Wow. And so I have a, I just found my Polaroid of him standing there. He's holding ha half a hot dog and a beer. Oh, <laughs> uh, you got to post that. <laughs> I know I'm going to post it. And um, unfortunately, I, I had a picture of he and I together, which I'm sure I think I snapped a picture of. And it's probably somewhere in my photos from, you know, seven years ago or something, maybe when I snapped it. But it, it got uh, it, it's lost. It got stolen with some other stuff. Um, oh, OK, but I know. So uh, uh, but anyway, I have that. I, I got to post that. And I just, get, at least to get that one. Yeah. That and then um, I have another polaroid that i found which is randy quaid you know cousin eddie mm. from and everything else he was actually oscar nominated for the last detail and you know things like that but he's known for his comedic prowess right yeah and, um uh he and i were really good friends i met him at a theater league i was doing in hollywood and we were like family friends too and so he had come over christmas eve to my brother's house where we were celebrating there and my parents had bought him a sweater and randy's like six foot five so the sweater is like this big. <laughs> Randy put it on. The sleeves were up to here. You know, the bottoms up to here. It was up and above his uh, belly his, button. Had his drink <laughs> and everything all night long with this sweater on. How you was, doing, Al? How you doing? <laughs> that was so sweet of him. He, he was a crack up. And then, you know, we went back to 
his brother's house. They lived in, he and Dennis lived next door to each other in Studio City. They bought houses right next door to each other because okay. they're in Texas. And his mom yep. had come in. And um, it's when Dennis was married to PJ Souls, who was in, you know, Halloween. Halloween and everything. Um, so, yeah, he still wore his sweater in front of his mom. <laughs> <laughs> right. So That's I just funny. found a, you know, a picture of him standing with me and my little brother in my in my brother's house. I got to post that too. I just, That's just, funny. Anyway, wow. those are those are just a couple little. So well, everyone, stuff. follow her on Instagram, Lori Tucker. Everybody, <laughs> check her out. Those are fun. I want to see those. I want to see those when you post those. Well, thanks well, for being on the show. I appreciate it. Everyone tuning in, thank you very much. Keep supporting independent music, regular music, any music you can. As I say always, download it. Don't just stream it, but download it. It helps so much more for the artists out there. Yeah. And uh, support their merch and their tours and all that good stuff, too. Right. Any last words? Just thank you for having me. It was a kick. Always yeah. fun to talk about arguably the greatest decade ever. <laughs> I say so, too. I mean, the movies and stuff, too. I'm just like, they're the right? best in that era. Yeah. Yeah, I kind of I kind of associate with late seventies too a little bit with the eighties. Oh, yeah, C kind of the start of Halloween. Let's say seventy. Right, it's like seventy eight to ninety four, so ninety three. Yeah, years. yeah, yeah. Up, Up to the crow, the movie to crow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very good. All right, Lori. Thanks everybody else for tuning in. I appreciate it, and I will see you guys soon. Bye bye. Bye.